sometimes it's good to go a different direction that everybody else does. So look at that amazing listing with all those great things and you go, you know what, I'm going to go to this one. It's a terrible listing on Treasure Map or on Facebook. It's a bad listing. It's got a couple pictures. You know, clearly somebody that doesn't have a lot of yard sales and they don't have specific item names on there. They just give general things and sometimes you're better off going to those places. Hello everybody, welcome back to Commonwealth Picker. My name is Kevin and we are in the eBay cave. And if you're new to the show, we basically do mostly eBay here. But today we have an interesting day. We have three sales from three different platforms. Occasionally my wife sells on Poshmark and she's been starting to list and share her closet a little bit more lately. We've kind of calmed down uh, after Halloween a little bit and she has done a little bit and she made a sale today out of Poshmark and we don't always show those on here but we, we figured we would because we made a Mercari sale today as well and we don't often lift, list on there but we're going to show you the Mercari sale, the eBay sale and I'm not going to show you the Poshmark sale because I haven't got it on video yet and I'm not sure what she's doing upstairs but we're going to put it on, maybe tack it onto this video or put it on a future video but we did have three sales from three different platform so anyway let's take a look at what's sold before we take a look at what's sold i'll tell you the numbers for the day you know i'm a part-time picker i have a full-time job and i'm a teacher so the salary is not amazing by any stretch of the imagination and i'm the only one in the household that works outside of the household so you know we've got a family of uh, there's five of us not to mention <laughs> a zoo we have and I'm the only one who goes out of the house to work. So my wife works from the home. She does eBay with me. She does a lot of listing. Matter of fact, a couple of these things that sold today, uh, the two items hanging behind me were both listed by her. We also have um, some Poshmark that she does and she helps me with the antique booths. And we're gonna have an antique booth video coming up really quick because we got the updates and we did really, really well this month for the most part for October and we had some pretty good sales. So we'll let you take a look at that. But for today, the sales were uh, $266.75 out of the Commonwealth Picker Store, zero sales out of the Homeschool Hustler Store, but we had a Mercari sale for $80. And we had a Poshmark sale for, I think, 14 but I got to make sure I'll check with her. So, all right, let's take a look what's sold. All right, speaking of Blue Ridge Mama, this is a sweater machine. Actually, this isn't the sweater machine. The sweater machines, for some of you who've sold these out there, they're kind of big. They come, I think they're early 90s. I could be wrong. They may be mid-90s. And it's a machine that, that literally makes sweaters. And it's heavy and it's bulky. And you got to make sure everything's there. And so she bought it at Goodwill. And I knew there was a lot of work involved in it. But she said, hey, this is too good a deal to pass up. I think she paid like three or four bucks for it. And she said, I'm going to part it out. And so she parted that thing out. She pulled the best pieces out of it. And almost every single piece she listed. And this is the first one that sold. And it sold for $9 plus shipping. And... This paid for the rest of the parts and pay and gave us a little bit of profit. And there's a bunch of really good parts that we'll be selling off over time. And we're going to make a pretty good amount of money. I think she, she told me she's going to estimate between $70 and $90 if everything sells. And I'm sure everything won't sell, but just about all of it. So my guess is 70 is a pretty good number. All right, so this is a group of DVDs. If you watched the video not too long ago... I had a video where I bought a whole ton of DVDs from a lady and this was why I made the deal was these History Channel DVDs. I paid 20 bucks for all the DVDs. I want to say there was like 90 of them, maybe a little bit more, I'm not quite sure. And about 40 of them are History Channel DVDs and the rest of them were regular DVDs that we're going to put in our booth and probably end up making 80 to $90 on profit after fees, after helping pay for the booth. And these are going to basically be pure profit or the first couple sales are going to pay for the entire lot. And so this one sold for 11.88 plus shipping. So this is half 
of the 90 DVDs that we bought. So my estimate, I think, was $150 profit for those DVDs when I bought it. And I think that's probably right. Maybe a little bit more. Now, we've had a heck of a time selling clothing lately. And a lot of you uh, longtime resellers out there know that clothing is uh, has had some difficulties, especially on eBay because of some uh, glitches and some other things. And and clothing in general is long tail. And it's getting a little bit more long tail as the years go by, I think. This is made in Korea, Peter Millar. It says, um, if I can pronounce it right, Kinlock, which is, I don't know where that course is, but you know, a lot of times they're overseas, they're in Europe, uh, in Scotland or whatever. And I'm not sure where that one is. I haven't even looked it up, but this is an older Peter Millar shirt, and it sold for $17.95, and it was a promoted listing. And I don't do very many promoted listings, but I did on a little bit of clothing just to see if I could move some of the old stock out. And sure enough, two of them sold. So I'm not a big fan of promoted listings. I'd rather just put a good price on it and see if it sells. But occasionally I'll do it on items that have been hanging around a while, literally. All right, this was the other promoted listing, and we sold it for sixteen eighty four. dollars uh, Charles Triwit is not the best brand, but I decided to buy these because they were in great condition. They looked like they were just dry cleaned, and I decided to, to buy them. I bought these at the Goodwill, and I thought I could probably get about $18, $19 for them and make like $9, 10 bucks a piece, and it didn't quite happen. We sold a few at that price, and then these have sold a little bit less. So we're going to make about $6 profit, $7 profit on this shirt, which if I would have known that, I probably wouldn't have bought them. But I'm okay with it. Like I said, this is really, really good shape. Somebody's getting a great deal on this one. All right, second night in a row after Halloween, having a Halloween sale. So this is on a yard sale video I haven't even aired yet. I'm going to air it pretty quick, um, hopefully in the next week or so. And we bought it just this last weekend, and it was it was uh, a sale that I knew was going to be good. So it is a sitting scarecrow, and this one, if you see the face down here, it says external speaker compatible to maximize tear, motion sound, step pad activated, bone chilling screaming, and creepy laughter. And this thing is brand new. The box has been open, but everything in there is brand new in the plastic. Everything's still in the spot where it should be. And it, they were, I, I can't remember if they were asked, they weren't asking anything. I think they was making an offer. I don't know, there was a sticker on it. Maybe it was 20 bucks, 25 bucks, I can't remember. And I think I made an offer and then I bundled it together with a smaller one that we sold yesterday. So we paid 25 bucks for this one and a smaller one. And the smaller one was a ghost. And it sold for $39, which covered all our cost, gave us a little bit of profit. So this is pure profit. And it sold for a hundred, literally days after we bought it, $150 plus shipping. So after everything is said and done here, we're going to make about $140 profit between the two items, uh, which is really, really good. And the ironic part, let me put this down, it's getting a little heavy. The ironic part is it was next to a yard sale, and you'll see this one on a video too, it was next to an indoor sale for a, a school that had massive amounts of stuff and had people lined up ready to get in. And I decided not to hang around there too long. There, it, it was clearly picked over. You know, when you have mountains of stuff and you're not finding anything, something's wrong with that picture. Because, you know, volume ought to mean you're gonna find some things and there was nothing to be found. I shouldn't say nothing. There wasn't much to be found. And I found out that they, were, uh, they had offered, I think, if you paid a little extra to come in a day early or two or three days early, and that stuff had been pre-picked for a premium price. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to get this stuff, I'm going to get out of here. And I went literally a block away, and there was a yard sale, and I found this. So you never know. Sometimes it's not good to do the conventional wisdom. Sometimes it is. You like if you have a, a massive community sale where there's 50 homes selling and everybody goes there every year, it's still probably a good idea to go there. But sometimes it's good to go a different direction that everybody else does. So look at that amazing listing with all those great things and you go, you know what, I'm going to go to this one. It's a terrible listing on Treasure Map or on Facebook. It's a bad listing. It's got a couple pictures 
you know, clearly somebody that doesn't have a lot of yard sales and they don't have specific item names on there. They just give general things. And sometimes you're better off going to those places and you're gonna find things that nobody else is gonna find because they don't know it's there. And that's my strategy most of the time. Um, but occasionally I'll go try and hit that home run somewhere else. All right, we just made two more sales while we're waiting here. And one is a replacement game part piece for a mousetrap game. And I'm gonna make about $2.10 on that. And then a couple of backgammon pieces and I'm gonna make about $2 on those. So those are, hey, whatever. If I could do that every day and I make an extra four bucks, you know, that's 1,500 bucks a year. So I'm all for that. All right, I'm gonna keep this one in the bag. You saw me buy this at a yard sale, and if you guys remember, this is the yard sale where I left two items. I left a pair of Sperry uh, Sparkle shoes, and I left a chalkboard that I bought. I just left them there. And the viewers pointed out, I didn't even know I left it until I, until one of the viewers told me I left those shoes. I knew I left the chalkboard by the time I got home. And you know what, sometimes I do that. I think I paid $10 for all that stuff, and this was 10 bucks right here, and it sold for $80 on Mercari. Um, after we calculated everything out, we're gonna make $54 profit or $56 profit on this leather Harley Davidson backpack. So I had it on eBay as well, and I had a little bit of interest. Had somebody offer me 50 plus shipping for it, and I, uh, and I turned it down. And I didn't even give them an offer in return. It would have probably taken the 80 that I got. It was listed for 100 or best offer. And I wanted to make a Mercari sale, so I took the 80 bucks on this one. And we are gonna ship this thing off. And I'm really happy with this sale. It's almost brand new. It's got a couple markings, but to make a nice little Mercari sale and to make over $50 profit on it is pretty good. All right, and like I said, we made that Poshmark sale too, so three platforms. So. Ideally, I just list on eBay. It's just easier to do one platform, but I think it's good to learn the other platforms and so we know how to do those. You know, I don't do some of the, I don't do Depop. I don't do uh, um, some of those other. I know there's Bonans out there. There's a bunch of different different platforms that you can do. Uh, eBay to me is still the best. We When we cross post on all these places, eBay still sells the most. I will say though, the Mercari will sell certain items better than eBay. But right now, it's not a whole a whole huge amount. What I don't do anymore, uh, I don't do much offer up. I do a little bit of Facebook Marketplace. So um, that's just what I'm doing right now. And uh, give me your feedback. Tell me in the comments below what it is you're doing. Are you cross-listing? Are you posting on both Mercari and eBay? Are you posting on Poshmark? Are you only Poshmark? Do you do Poshmark and eBay? And what your system is to track them down. So my wife lists on Mercari, her Mercari. She lists on Poshmark and she lists on eBay. And we have a little bit of a system here where she'll delist something based on what's in the picture. She puts a little succulent in the picture and it tells her that that's on Poshmark. And now that she's doing Mercari, if she lists something on Mercari and Poshmark and eBay, she's gotta have two things in the pictures. So we do it through pictures. So I can come down here and I can look up at my big screen or I can look at my little computer here and say, all right, this thing's on Mercari, this thing's on Poshmark, and we know where they're at. The viewers don't, um, the people who are viewing the items don't necessarily know, but she'll know. And uh, so far the system's working. If we get too much bigger, it might not work. But anyway, thank you all for joining us. And don't forget if you haven't subscribed to subscribe and hit that alert, alert button and give us a thumbs up. And you guys are awesome. Can't wait to see you next time. All right, everybody, I just wanted to tell you something that happened to me at work this week. So I'm not afraid to tell people what I do, and it works to my advantage from time to time. And so I have people at work that know what I do. And this week I had four different folks approach me and ask me about reselling some things for them and if I'd buy it off of them and, and a few other type issues like that. Um, I only made a deal with one of the four, and you're looking at it right here, and I'll talk about it in just a second. But uh, the other ones, uh, one I passed on for now, and the other one I said, hey, I'll probably get up with you as it gets a little later. One of them was a clothing deal, and I just said, you know, not right now. I'm just not ready to do any more clothes right now, um, but we might revisit it later. And one was selling off some stuff. Um, I think it was their mother's, and I said, hey, take some pictures. And I'll take a look at what she's got and, uh, and let you know.
But here was one that came up, and some of you know this brand here, Death Wish Coffee. And each one of these mugs are handmade. Here's a little cream cream set as well. And this is the Yeti. And they're numbered on the bottom. So there's a limited edition. So there's 5,000. This is 2907. And they're handmade. And you can kind of tell it because like this one, I don't know if you can tell here. Let me move. Let me put these two next to each other. It's the same mug. But you can probably tell this one's a little wider than this one. So... The size isn't exact because they're each handmade and this one has a really low number on it 22 out of 5,000 and this one has a much higher number so what are we looking at there 2692 so I paid up for these I paid a hundred dollars for these mugs which is more than I would ever pay out and about but I know this person pretty well and and I want to sell them for them, and I'm going to make some money on them as well. So I may make as little as $60. I may make as much as $120, $130 profit on it. So I'm okay with that. I'm probably going to be around doubling my money. This one should be the good one. I've seen some of these go for around 100 bucks, And so this would almost cover the cost. Not quite, obviously, after fees. And uh, so we'll see. I could be wrong, but uh, I know we're going to cover our money and make a little bit of a profit. This one can go in, go as a set. 2269. I'm hoping this one goes for a decent amount. So I think the deal kind of hinges on this. You know, am I going to make 60 bucks profit or am I going to make 160 bucks profit? And it might come down to does this have any more value because it's 22 out of 5,000. It may not, but... Either way, I'm going to make some money, and I'll keep track of it, and I'll tell you. My guess is right now I'm going to turn, I'm going to probably make an $80 profit. That's what I'm going to guess right now, $80 profit. So we'll have to see, and I, I, I almost would never make that deal, but I know this person, and I think it's the right thing to do right now, and we'll keep you updated. <music>